thought that entered my head was, this is something I'm not supposed to see. This is a secret. I'm not supposed to be up here. Earth was so beautiful that I actually started getting emotional. I thought, this is what heaven must look like. Maybe this is heaven. I know that might sound strange. There are so many horrible problems here. War, hunger, killing, suffering. But heaven is supposed to be this beautiful, perfect place. And from up there, I couldn't imagine anything more beautiful, more perfect than this planet. It really is a paradise. It's fragile. It's beautiful. It's perfection. You have to stop and ask yourself, what in creation could possibly be better than this? Anyway, my uh, next guest uh, is a NASA astronaut. He's just completed his second space flight in May. Take a look at this. Now it's time for our favorite segment, which Good is... To see you again. Yeah, likewise. In my corner. In your corner. Scooter's, Scooter's corner. corner. And he's actually in his real corner. You're, it, where do you, where are you sitting right now? Oh, wait a minute. I got a gun in my mouth. What are you going to do with I that? I got to get rid of that. I put it under the dash. Maybe the next guy. Can <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> All right, is there any other gum down here, or are you the first guy? I'm the first. All right. Atlantis there you go. is pretty new. All right. So the next commander of Atlantis, okay. don't worry about bringing gum. We got some for you. Uh, so veteran, two-time yep. space shuttle veteran, mm -hmm. Hubble uh, Space Telescope repairman, yep. and author of the new book, uh, Spaceman, an Astronaut's Unlikely Journey uh, to Unlock the Secrets of the Universe, which is out today. Is that right? That is, yes, today. Available everywhere, apparently. Where you can get books, <laughs> you can get Spaceman today. So it's an unlikely journey. Yes. What's so unlikely? I added the word unlikely. <laughs> I mean, we, we went over what the title should be with my... Uh, I had a co-writer, uh, Tanner Colby, and, and uh, our editor, uh, Kevin Doughton from Crown, and you know we, we, had, we were having lunch one day and going over titles, and, and we liked the, the uh, Unlock the Secrets of the Universe is uh, something I, <laughs> when, my, when, when, when people would ask me, uh, you know, what does Hubble do? And I'd be like, well, does it? And you get into a complicated answer. So after a while, I just started saying, it unlocks the secrets of the universe, and that's what we're trying to do here. And it became kind of like a standard line or a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a funny thing to say for my, for my crew and I. Um, and, and so now that's now it's in the title, but the, uh, we would say a journey to do that. But I, I, I wanted the word unlikely in there because I never thought of myself, and I don't think any, much, most other people have uh, who met me uh, wouldn't say I'm like what you would consider to be a likely person to become an astronaut. You know, growing up, uh, I grew up on Long Island. Never, you know, I, I was interested in, in astronauts, and I dreamed about being an astronaut as a very little boy because I can remember seeing Neil Armstrong walk on the moon when I was six years old. And, uh, but soon after that, it, it just became, it went into the realm of impossible. And I didn't really think about that until I got to be older. And you know, I'm, uh, still I'm afraid of heights. I don't like heights. Uh, don't particularly like to go very fast. Uh, didn't learn to swim very well when I was a kid. Had to relearn, learn how to do that, become a good swimmer to become an astronaut. Learn how to do that, become a good swimmer to become an astronaut. Learn how to do that, become a good swimmer to become an astronaut. Learn how to do that, become a good swimmer to become an astronaut. travel changed <laughs> once I got into my training and and so on so I don't think I, I really don't see myself as a stereotypical fighter pilot test pilot person that becomes a becomes an astronaut so and and, and I can't see very well I was medically disqualified uh, by NASA on my, my third attempt so it took me a few times it took four tries to get in and and it, it but it, that, that's all okay you know and, and I think having a passion and, and sticking to it and not giving up was really important, and uh, so that's why I think it was unlikely. It's very. Un I, I wouldn't be betting on me <laughs> <laughs> when I was when I was applying, but I was lucky enough to to get in there. Please welcome Mike Massimino, everybody. Mike Massimino.
Well, this is what I thought you might be interested in seeing. This is our stuff. It's out of the water now. This is kind of like the lower part of the Hubble. The Hubble looks kind of like a big, uh, it has one big can on the bottom, and then it has a, a, which we call the aft shroud, and then it has some equipment bays stacked on it, and then it's kind of got a, a skinnier part that uh, is the forward shell light shield where the light comes in and gets distributed to all the instruments. And where we're going to be working is mainly in this part of it, you know, what we call the aft shroud, where the scientific instruments are. Now, when, when Hubble first launched, it uh, had a problem with its mirror, and it couldn't see in the visible light spectrum very well. A lot of the, a lot of the pictures came back, then it looked so clear, and everyone was kind of disappointed. Uh, but these smart guys came up with a way to fix that, and what that was is to literally put glasses on a telescope. It's called COSTAR, which is a fancy acronym for Corrective Optics Space Telescope Axial Replacement, which means uh, space glasses, more or less. And it's just like when you can't see so well, your eyes are lens, and the light comes in and doesn't bend quite right. So you put glasses to bend the, the light a little bit differently. So bam, it hits your, you know, hit, hits your eye just the right way. So you can, you know, gets right back in the retina, and you can, you can see clearly. Same thing for the telescope. So now all that's been changed out, and we don't need this instrument anymore. The, the corrective lenses. We're going to take out this instrument. We're going to put a new one in that does science. For my first spacewalk, my good. So we open these guys up. Mike does the bolts, I help him open them up, and then that gives us access to the gyroscopes. The gyros are these boxes that you see, normally with the white handle, that's the easy one to get to, but the other ones that are ducked behind the star trackers are really difficult to get to. There's a lot of delicate stuff inside of here, like these star trackers, uh, we're not allowed to touch those. And not, you know, I can't even think about breathing on them. You know, luckily I have a face mask in front of me, so. I wouldn't want to, I couldn't breathe on them anyway. But I'm not allowed to touch or bump them or anything. I want to keep away from those things. You don't want to break anything inside of here or else it's game over, you know, and then a lot of people are really mad at you. And you can't really hide it, you know. It'll be kind of obvious that something's not working. So we've got to be really careful inside of here. It's the most delicate part of the telescope. And uh, they're putting a big oaf like me inside of it. The gyroscopes on Hubble are, are pretty amazing. They're able to point the telescope very accurately. And, uh, the example I'll give you is that if you were on, uh, if you were on the, the top of the Empire State Building in New York City and you had a laser pointer and, uh, and say I was down, you were in New York and I'm down in Washington, D.C. on the top of the Washington Monument and I was holding a dime, you could hit that dime with the laser from the Empire State Building in New York City and the dime is at the Washington Monument. That's how accurate it can point the telescope. I would have made around. that terrible mess of my flight suit. Yeah, that's why we wear a diaper. The Hubble symbolizes man's quest for the bridge between cosmology and philosophy. And so when you go off to catch that thing and it appears on the horizon, it's a powerful moment. The conclusion we've come to from that is that there's a significant spherical aberration that appears to be present in the optics. It's a critical to look at how and it is inexcusable the way they fail. Ten years before, by a simple mistake with a measuring instrument, the mirror had been ground to the wrong position.
shuttle astronauts will visit the Hubble Space Telescope for the final time in May 2009. In five bold and daring spacewalks, they will upgrade Hubble's instruments, allowing it to continue making remarkable scientific discoveries well into the next decade.